Baker in. Is that your new bow? Yeah, I, um, I just got it. I really like it. I, um, it doesn't look right to me, though. I'm not sure what's wrong. I think he messed up on my order. Huh. Well, it looks okay. But, one thing, let me show you. See that? It's like a pistol grip. Mm -hmm. so that's how you want to hold it with your left hand. So you see how, oh. the, see how the limbs, the tips are pointed away from you? Mm -hmm. That's what you want it to look like. Okay. Some people get confused and they think of a bow and arrow as, you know, like this and they're actually holding it backwards. So actually you want to hold it this way. You can go ahead and hold it again. Yeah, that feels better in my hand actually. So one thing, think of it as a person that you're talking to and their belly is facing you. So this is the belly of the bow. And just like a person, the back is behind them, so this is the back of the bow. Okay. So, so the, the back... belly of the bow is the one closer to me. Yep. And this is the and back. And this is the back of the bow. Yep. Alright. That's got the handle. This middle section is called the riser. And then these Those are, are the limbs. limbs. So how do I get the string on properly without hurting the bow? Well, one of the, the safest ways to do it, so you're not hurting the bow, and you're not going to hurt yourself, is to use a bow string. Do you have one? Not with me, no. I got Yeah, I got one. Oh, you have one, okay. Yeah, okay. So this is my bow stringer. It's got two different ends on it. This is for the bottom, and this is for the top. And if you got a brand new one, you want to make sure that these knots are good and tight. Because if they're not tight and you put it on, they can slip and you can have a problem. So that's for the bottom one. And then the top limb, once again, make sure that knot's good and tight. And then put a finger in there and make sure that it's centered. Because if this is slid up on one side or the other, and you put it on your limb, it's going to be twisting the limb. And the whole idea is here to, to um, string the bow safely and not twist the limbs or hurt yourself. So what we do is, we take this bottom one, hold the bow like you'd normally shoot it, and slide that bottom right on like that, and then the top part goes right over the top, and it goes flat on the limb behind your string. Now you can do this with one feet, one foot or two feet. I like to do it with two feet because it pulls more straighter down as opposed to an angle. So go one foot, two foot feet. Get it centered. And you want to push this down as far as it'll go. And then pull gently to get it centered. It won't be out like this or twisted. Get right in the middle, hold it in the middle, and then pull up. And with this hand, you can slide this right into the knock grooves. And do your best to get it really into the grooves here. And then gently, slowly let it down. And make sure it's on. And then you can slip these off. And you kind of want to be cautious. And make sure it is on the way it should be. And then grab a hold. Just do that a few times to make sure it's on there. Because if it's not on correctly and it's off a little, you could pull and this could it could pop and twist and you could poke your eye out or you could break the bow. And that's how you get it on there. So I'm going to show you the reverse of that so you can know how to get it yeah, off. Yeah, how to get it off so I don't hurt it doing that either. So, you can hold it like you normally would. Put the bottom piece on like that. Take the top. Once again, you slide it over the top. Put it right on there. Put both feet in. 
make sure it's on and you're nice and square slide it down a little gently pick up and then this I just turn it to the side a little slide it right off slide it down the limb and there it's off <clears throat> now most of these bows come with these strings these are Flemish twist strings they're twisted so when they when you leave them on the bow like this it doesn't untwist which would be bad and change your brace height so that's why most of these bows come slid onto the limb like that you know some people slide the, the uh, loops off of the bows which is an alternative way to do it it's a little bit harder to get it on and off and your string can untwist which will change your brace height and then you'd have to go back and readjust everything so this is the way that we normally do it okay here why don't you try it make sure you know how to do it okay so this just caps on the bottom one yeah like this and then we take this part of it and we put it over the top behind yep. the string and position my feet so this slides up right next to the string and just pull it up. Make sure this is in there right. Yeah. And let go gently. Yeah. Does that look about right? Yeah, it looks good. Now just pull it a couple times to make sure it's seated in there good. Okay. Just feels pretty good. I think I'm going to practice with it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. hang on, hang on. One big rule with a bow is you don't ever want to pull back and let go without an arrow. Why not? Because when you have an arrow, all the stored energy in the limbs gets transferred into the arrow and goes. So when the string comes to a rest, it's just a little bit of a mmm. Whereas if there's no arrow, that energy has to, to go somewhere. So the string and it can snap the limbs right in half. Really? Right. So you never want to dry fire a bow. You always want to have an arrow in it. Good to know. Yeah. I wouldn't want to hurt my new bow. I just paid a lot for it. Yeah. So what other things should I not do then? Or remember to do? Well, one of my big things is you never want to leave it in your car with the windows rolled up on a sunny day. Because even if it's only 55, 60 degrees out, when the sun's beating in your windows and that temperature goes up, you know, these are, you know, made out of, uh, you know, special glues and stuff. Mm -hmm. Only can take so much heat before kapowing. Before it breaks, okay. So then should I not put it in the cold either? Is that bad for it? I think the heat hurts it worse than the cold. But I think as far as temperature-wise, if you've got it in a, you know, a 70, 80 degree house in the wintertime, and if it's 5 degrees outside, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go straight out. I, what I'll do is I'll put it in the, kind of the side room of the house where maybe it's only 45 or 50 degrees cooler. Cool it down a little bit first so it doesn't get that big shock in temperature. But I'm kind of picky. Most people might just go right out. I'm not, you know. Yeah, well, I wouldn't want to hurt it. You know, I just got it. So, yeah. so just avoid the ex extreme temperature changes like that. Okay. And the, and the thing with the car. So, I have another question. What's this thing on the string right here? Well, that's a good question. That's a, a knocking point. Okay. And that basically just shows you where where you want the arrow to go for each shot. So you click the arrow on right below it. How did you know which way to put the arrow on? Well, there's a little plop ring. You okay. want that on the outside. And this odd feather is this way. Okay. If you put it backwards, then this feather will hit could hit on the way out of here. So anyway, you know, if you've got, if you didn't have this and it was too low, you know, that's going to cause problems on the way out. Or if you had it too high, you know, the arrow's going to fly out crazy. So your knocking point just shows you right where to put the arrow every time. So then you're more consistent shooting, right? Right. Now see, when you ordered your bow, you said you wanted it to come with this all the way on. You probably don't even remember filling out the form. Yeah. See, that's good if you're not too sure about that kind of stuff. Well, let me show you my bow. 
Okay, here's my bow. See, I ordered it without a knocking point because I like to use different di different types of arrows, and sometimes the knocking point will change with the different types of arrows. But what I do is I put it on just about 90 degrees with the string, and then about the thickness of the knock, I'll slide it up, and then right above it, I'll take a piece of dental floss or a piece of string, and I'll tie it on there as a temporary marking. And then I'll shoot it for a good half hour, an hour, to make sure the arrow's flying good. So I know that that point is right, and I'll adjust it if I need to. And then I'll take my own little brass clip and clip it on there. And then I'm good to go, and I got it set up the way I want it. Okay. So that's how you do your knocking point. There was one other important thing I wanted to show you about um, setting up your bow. Okay. This height here, the distance from here, the deepest part of the grip to the string is called your brace height. And believe it or not, that's really important to have that right. This is a Beowulf, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I think the recommended uh, brace height on this is between seven and a half and eight inches. So what you can do, take your tape measure and you measure that. So you're right about seven and three quarters. That's pretty good. Now see if it's too high or too low, what you'd have to do is, you know, use your stringer, instead of taking the top off, take the bottom off. And you'll see, if you're twisting it tighter, that'll shorten the string. And then when you put the string back on, your brace height will be higher. So if you need your brace height higher, like if you're down below seven and a half and you want to bring it higher, twist it tighter, which will shorten the string so you get more height or the other way around to lower it, and it'll, sh it'll uh, shoot much better. Every bow, even if it's the same model, if it's a different bow, each bow has its own sweet spot where it's going to shoot the best. So it'll take you a few weeks of shooting to find that right sweet spot. When you find it, you'll notice that the bow is a lot, it sounds a lot quieter and it's shooting quicker and smoother. That's something to think about. I had another question. I wasn't sure what these exactly are for, but when I ordered them on the custom order form, they were free, so I figured I'd get them anyways. But what do they do? Well, these are string silencers. So, it's nice and quiet. Without those, this would almost be like a guitar string, okay? Like, boom, and you get the vibration. And all that vibration is, is not really the best thing for the bow. Mm -hmm. um, so when you, you, know, you do a real shot and that string comes down, it's a nice, kind of like a doom, nice, uh, how's it going to say, is, you know, that, that sound. Where, without it, if you get that boom and all this vibration and all this, and it, it's not really good for the bow and it sounds kind of, it can sound pretty bad. So that's the main purpose, is the sound. And the second purpose is, uh, like a stabilizing effect, you know, it's nice and boom. So it can help you even shoot more accurately because the strings just kind of boom as opposed to rare, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's quieter and it keeps the bow from vibrating too much. Yep. Okay. So they're a big help and White Wolf definitely recommends that you do get them. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are uh, shy away from them because they think it slows the bow down. Now. I think if you have them too far down, they can slow things down a little bit. But the further up they are, the less it's going to affect speed. Mm -hmm. But you can't have them too high because then they're going to be hitting the limb and causing other problems. So that's why they are right there. Everything is really kind of fine-tuned to optimize everything so it works the best. But yep, these are definitely recommended, so it's a good thing you got them. Well, I just thought they were cute as they matched my bow. So. Yeah, a lot of people uh, like that. Yeah. You can get them just about any color you want, by the way. Yeah, they're a nice addition. They were free. Um, I also got the Cafero Rest for free, so I figured if it was free, it was good, and it's recommended by White Wolf, so. Yep. That's a good thing to also order, because when they finally put the bow all together and they get it ready to test shoot, with this on here, it's much easier for them to test shoot because they're not going to be scratching anything up yeah, or putting really them. Slick. Yeah. So that's another thing. Really good to order that. And you know, you know, a year or two down the road, 
if you want to put your own custom pad on, you can always take that off and put your own on. Okay.